Uh, hey guys, how's it going? It is um, Monday night, uh, June 7th, 2021 at 11.40 p.m. Um, I, well, me, including my every other Jets fans, are not in a good mood tonight. Shitty night for Jets fans. Um, if you wonder, wonder why, if you wonder why, obviously if you're a hockey fan, you know why. Um, the Jets got eliminated by the Montreal Canadiens in a sweep in the second round in four straight games. So yeah, in the second round, and the Montreal Canadiens are moving on to they'll either face Colorado or Vegas in the final four. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna talk about like the Jets season, like regular season, uh, and postseason too. So yeah, I'll just get started. Um, I'll start with the off season or whatever. Um, I remember in the off season, the Jets like acquired like. Um, they got Paul Stastny back, which is I think it was a trade. Um, I remember like we traded. Um, Stastny was for Vegas, and uh, he came back to Winnipeg. Um, we traded Carl Dahlstrom for him, which is good, and I think a pick. I can't remember, but yeah. So I was happy. I was like Paul Stastny. I was mad when he went to Vegas in 2018. But yeah. Um, so I'm glad we're glad he's back, and. Uh, Jets signed veteran Ford's Nate Thompson. I was like, all right, not bad. Um, they signed Trevor Lewis to a PTO. Okay, I, I like Trevor Lewis. Um, my uncle Joe, who was a Canes fan, he really loved him in uh as a Kane. So I trust him, and he liked Thompson too. And defenseman Derek Forbert. I was like, okay, not bad, Jets. Not bad. You know, my uncle Joe was a fan of him too. Um, yeah, so I trust I trust him. So. Uh, we go to January. The first game of the season for the Jets was uh, January 14th, 2021. Um, they're facing the Calgary Flames. Um, and a good come-from-behind deficit. Um, yeah, you know what I mean. Flames, uh, first period was 3-1 Flames after 20 minutes. And uh, Jets scored two in the second. No goals in the third. And overtime, Patrick Laine. Scores in overtime. I was like, yeah, for a second of the game. Everyone was so excited. You know what? I, f I have faith in this man. I do think he could be the next Timu Solani for this Jets franchise. So I'm going to turn my fan on. Yeah, it's so fucking hot in here, man. Um, But yeah, so I was like, yeah, I, I know Lon is going to be a good fit here. I know it. But yeah. Um, Then the next game against the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh... Logan Stanley made his NHL debut tonight. I was like, awesome, man. I knew he was going to get a call-up eventually. He'll prove everyone that he's not a bust. You know? Because I believe that. I was one of the few that still had faith in Dubois. I almost said Dubois. Um, Logan Stanley. You know, I knew he was going to be a solid top 14 man. Even top 6, I'd be fine with that. You know, we need like a... I like those like six foot five over that players. You know what I mean. Like a Tyler Myers or Zidane Chara. So, yeah. Um, you know, he played decent that game. He was steady. And he was steady all season, actually. And when I heard uh, Lonnie got hurt, I was like, oh, my God. Why? God. We better not have a, another injury-riddled season. You know? Because that's just what the Jets needed. But, yeah. And the Jets lost 3-1. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, on Saturday, January 23rd, 2021, the Jets make a blockbuster trade with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, they trade forwards Patrick Lonnie and Jack Rossovic to the Columbus Blue Jackets for forwards Pierre-Luc Dubois and a third-round pick. And when I first heard it, I was like, oh, no, 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 this is fake. I heard this rumor shitloads at times. But it came true. It actually happened. So, yeah. I was so mad when they traded him. You know, the whole city was mad. But, yeah. Um. So, I was going to say. He made his, um. Because he had to uh, quarantine for because of stupid COVID or whatever for two weeks. And made his Jets debut on February the 9th. Um. Yeah. So, I'll go to that game.
uh, here, stats, uh, he was a minus one that night, um, had one hit, and time on ice was 13 minutes and 10 seconds, so yeah, his face-off percentage was 33%, so yeah, I was like, not too good, but I know he's gonna be a good fit here, you know, um, so yeah, and apparently later he got injured again, not in the game, but I forgot when, I was like, oh my god, I hope this is not like a like Lonnie trade, like fake an injury or whatever just to get traded. That's just what the Jets needed. Another player doesn't want to be in Winnipeg, you know? I want to make sure it's filming. I don't trust this sometimes. Okay, good. Um, So I was like, no, I don't want, we don't need another player that doesn't want to be here. We already dealt with that a lot, like a lot of times, you know? Now, if you haven't noticed, like Winnipeg is not the most attractive place for an NHL player, which just kind of sucks because, you know, I do think it's a nice city, but... Yeah. Um, you know, there's other cities I like too, but you know, okay, off topic. Um, so yeah, nope. Uh, he returned for the game on February the 21st against the Vancouver Canucks. Um, wait, did he return that game? Because I remember the Jets played the Canucks the night uh, before. Uh, let me see here. Uh, nope, I was right. So on February the 21st, um, Jets were down 2 nothing in the second period, and, um, I'm just gonna go here. At 14.37 of the second period, Pierre-Luc Dubois scores his first as a Jet, assisted by Blake Wheeler and Mark Scheifele, and I went crazy. I did a live stream in that game, actually. So, yep. It was an awesome, that was an awesome night, man. And he also got an assist on Pionk's goal in the third, the 3-2 goal on the power play. Um, and then the Canucks tied the game late on the power play. Um, and guess who was the hero in overtime at 20? Guess who was the hero in overtime? Pierre-Luc Dubois, just 27 seconds in. Woo! Man, I know this kid's going to have a good time here. I just, I know it. You know, sadly, that's not really aging well. Everything I said aged horribly, man. But you know, I still like him. I hope he likes it here, though. But anyways, um, yeah. So I was happy, uh, anything else? Uh, seeing from, there's like, oh shit. Alright, since, um, March 29th, 2000, yeah, you know what, 2000, um, like, sorry, 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 2021. God, I'm such an idiot. Um, the Jets won 5-1 against the Calgary Flames. I live that stream, live stream that game as well. Um, and after that, the Jets went on a seven-game losing skid. It was like, holy shit, man. Like, jeez, what's wrong with the Jets, man? Like, why are they playing like this? I know every team goes on a slump, but... Oh, wait, no, 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 I was wrong. My mistake. Um, God, sorry, guys. Uh, April 15th, um, Jets won 5-2 against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And then after that, the Jets went on a long game losing skid. Like, they couldn't score a goal. Their defense was horrible. Hellebuck was a sieve at times. And yeah, Ambrose too. Then to snap their seven-game losing streak, the Jets clinched their playoff spot finally with a 4-1 win against the Calgary Flames on May 5th. Woo! That did not age well either. And yeah, straight two-game losing skid and go on another two-game winning streak. Last four games. Uh, so in the postseason... Um, Game one against the Edmonton Oilers in Edmonton. Um, I was nervous for the series because everyone thought the Jets were going to get slaughtered by the Oilers, but especially by McDavid and Dreisaitl. And yeah. So we'll go to that game. Um, no score in the first. Um, Jesse Pugliarvi in the second period opened the scoring at 8-24, assisted by Tyson Berry and Darnell Nurse. And later, at 11.01, call the pool man, because Tucker Poolman scores his first career playoff goal, um, assisted by Blake Wheeler and Nate Thompson. In the third period, Logan Stanley takes a shot. It looks like it went off the crossbar and out. Then we were like, um, wait, hold on. We might hear a horn pretty soon. And we heard the horn. And, oh, it's a goal. Yeah. And we saw the replays. It was in, but it turns out Dominic Toninato, um t tipped it in front. You know, yeah. So, uh, so Dominic Toninato actually tipped it for his first 
goal as a Winnipeg Jet. And I think that's his first career playoff goal, too. I could be wrong. Uh, but, yeah. Um, weird fact. Um, Dominic Tonerado's first NHL goal was actually against the Winnipeg Jets when he was a member of the Colorado Avalanche on um, Valentine's Day of 2019 with a 4-1 win with, the, with an Avalanche 4-1 win. <laughs> Strange fact. Let me tell you what. Anyways, uh, game two. Oh, game two is entertaining but boring as fuck, though. It was a goalie showdown between Connor Halbach and Mike Smith. Because both goalies were outstanding in this series, um, especially in game two. I almost had a heart attack, actually. Um, so, yeah, majority of the game was scored. So, we go to overtime. Paul Stastny rips a shot. It eventually tipped off a of former Jet Dmitry Kulikov and Adam Larson. Then passed Mike Smith through a screen. And I was like, oh, I didn't, when I saw it, I didn't even know that went in. But yeah, it was awesome. Jets take a 2 0 series lead. Assisted by Andrew Kopp and Tucker Pullman at 4 06 in an overtime. Alright, game three, back to Winnipeg. That's it, back to Winnipeg. <laughs> um. All right, I was like, okay, the Jets should feel comfortable. They're at home, but yeah, you know what I mean. Um, the Jets Oilers scored uh, two goals in the first period, uh, both of them by Leon Dreisaitl. Um, the first one came at six thirty-three, assisted by Slater Cuckoo and Connor McDavid. Um, he scored a second goal on the power play at nine ten, uh, assisted by Kaylor Yamamoto and uh, Connor McDavid. Power play. Um, the Jets get on the board. Nikolai Ehlers' his first um, playoff goal. I believe that's his first career playoff goal if you don't count the qualifiers. Yeah, I think that still counts. But, um, yeah. Assisted by Pierre-Luc Dubois and Neil Pionk. at 17-13. Later, um, Zach Cassian gets his fir first uh, of the playoffs. Assisted by Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid at 18-17. In the third period, uh, Jujar Kara scores his playoff goal, assisted by Adam Larson and Devin Shore at 4.43 of the third period. He's like, oh my god, I know what this is going to lead to. I know the Jets are going to choke this series. Oh, and the Jets took that personally, I guess. Because on the power play, Matthew Perot scores his uh, first of the playoffs, assisted by Andrew Kopp and Pierre-Luc Dubois at 11.41. A scramble in front of the net uh, with that goal. Then later, um, Blake Wheeler kicks a rebound past Mike Smith um, for his second of the playoffs. This is why Josh Morrissey and Mark Scheidt was like, you know what, Jets could tie this. You know? Hey, this is awesome. Come on, Jets, I know you can do this. You know I said I was losing faith. Then, at 14:44, Josh Morrissey rips a shot past Mike Smith. Assisted by Adam Lowry at 1444. I don't know if I said that already, but oh well. And oh my god, we were so excited, man. Want to come from behind win, but don't get too excited because we've still lots of time left. Then in the overtime, Nikolai Ehlers with the second of the game. Assisted by Paul Stastny at 913 of overtime. Okay, all right, Jets. Uh, you could win tomorrow. Let's just end the series now. <laughs> oh, man. So exciting, man. Um, game four. Um, the Jets open the scoring at 6-16. Mark Scheifele's first in the playoffs, assisted by Josh Morrissey. Wait, excuse me. Uh, Blake Wheeler and Josh Morrissey on the power play. Um, Oilers tied the game. Uh, Connor McDavid, first of the playoffs, assisted by Leon Dreisaitl and Jesse Pugliarvi at... 7:33. Jets would regain the lead at 15:55, assisted by Mason Appleton and Josh Morrissey. Wait, ugh, sorry, sorry. Appleton scores, assisted by Josh Morrissey and Adam Lowry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, this is a bad video. Um, the Oilers tie the game again off of juicy rebound from Connor Hellebuck. Ryan Nugent Hopkins first of the playoffs, assisted by Zach Cassian and Adam Larson at. 344. Um, 
the Oilers would take their first lead of the night with Alex Chase on um, first of the playoffs. Assisted by Leon Dreisettle and Ryan Nugent Hopkins at 16:37 on the power play. The Jets would tie the game. Mark Scheifele um, scores off a turnover by Ethan Bear. Um, assisted by Kyle Connor and Blake Wheeler at 6:01. I feel bad for Ethan Bear, man. Like a lot of people were criticizing him, like racially or whatever. Is what I heard. Like that's that's sad, man. I feel I feel for a man. Then. Um, no goals in first over to your second. 6.52 of third overtime. KFC! Kyle fucking Connor scores the goal in, in triple overtime. Assisted by Neil Pionk at 6.52. City of Winnipeg goes insane. And it was like 1 in the morning too. Here, I'm going to go full play-by-play -play when it actually ended. 104 the time. The actual time was like, holy fuck, man. Yeah, because the game started late. I don't know why. Because NHL schedule makers are stupid. But yeah. Then the Jets get like a week and a half off. Because the Montreal Canadiens and Toronto Maple Leafs were still playing. And I thought the Leafs were going to win this series. Because the Habs were on the brink of elimination, actually. And they came back to win the series in seven games. So I'm glad for them. I like the Canadians. I hate the Leafs. Uh, no offense if you're a Leafs fan watching this. Because, yeah. Sorry if I'm having trouble talking. I'm not. I, I'm the worst for that, man. <laughs> I said, man, people. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, make sure it's still recording. Cause it, you know me. I were just 16 minutes in. All right. Uh, I hope this video doesn't stop automatically. But yeah. Um. Round two: Jets and Canadians. Game one in Winnipeg. Um. So game one in Winnipeg with the Jets and Habs. Um, yes, Barry Kotkaniemi scores his first of the playoffs. Or fourth of the playoffs. Sorry, sorry. Assisted by Jeff Petrie and Eric Gustafson at 3.30. Um, Eric Stahl scores his first of, of the ugh, first of the playoffs. Assisted by um, Corey Perry and Joel Edmondson at 5.10. The Jets get on the board. Adam Lowry, shorthanded, unassisted at 11:52. Then Canadians would regain the would regain their two goal lead. Nick Suzuki with a nice toe drag outweighs Hellebuck and tucks it in for his third of the playoffs, assisted by Joel Edmondson and Cole Caulfield at 17:14. No goals in the first. I mean, in the um, second. Sorry, sorry. Me again. Um. In the third, D Derek Forward scores his first of the playoffs to cut the lead in half, assisted by Pierre-Luc Dubois and Josh Morris at 9.22. The Canadians will regain their two-goal lead again on the power play from Brendan Gallagher, assisted by Shea Weber and Jeff Petrie. Um, Kyle Connor cuts the lead in half again, assisted by Nikolai Ehlers and Neil Pionk for his third of the playoffs. Then uh, we all know what happened. Uh, Jake Evans scores the empty netter for a wraparound, assisted by Tyler Toffoli and Eric Stahl at 19:03, and here and here comes the boom. Shifley comes in with a hard hit, and it's a scary moment because um they actually needed a stretcher for Jake Evans, and it was a scary moment. You know we're all glad that um uh, Evans is doing good. I heard he's doing good now. I heard he didn't, he didn't have to go to the hospital, which is good news. You know you don't want to see that. You know. Um, my unpopular opinion, um, it was a clean hit, but it, at bad timing is my opinion. Alright, you, you can disagree with me, I don't care. But sending death threats, come on, like, that's classless, man. Um, game two. No goals in the first, the only goal actually scored by, uh, Tyler Toffoli. Shorthanded two, assisted by Shea Weber and Arteri Lykin at one 41. Unbelievable, man. I live streamed that game too. That was a waste of time, man. This whole series was a waste of time if you're a Jets fan. Um Game 3 in Montreal. Corey Perry scores in the first period for his third of the playoffs, assisted by uh Eric Stahl and the former Jet, Yoel Armia. I always call him Joel. I don't care. Um in the second um, 
Our Terry Lekkinen scores his first of the playoffs. Um, he replaced Jake Evans. Um, assisted by Philip Deneau and Brendan Gallagher at 9.24. Um, the X-Jack comes to haunt us again. Um, Yoel Armia scores a short-handed goal unassisted at 13.41. Um, the Jets would get on the board with Adam Lowry, second of the playoffs, assisted by Matthew Perot and Mason Appleton at 17.51. And we, that kept, brought some life to the Jets, but I knew they weren't coming back with that sh shit performance. Um, in the third, on the power play, Nick Suzuki scores his fourth of the playoffs, assisted by Cole Caulfield and Tyler Toffoli at 8.52. Um, and the, to close out the score, in a, Yoel Armia, again, scores his fourth of the playoffs, assisted by Joel Evanson and Shea Weber at 16.42. And that closed out the game. The Jets are on the brink of elimination. Game four, elimination day for the Jets. Um, in the first period, Eric Gustafson scores his first of the playoffs on the power play, assisted by Nick Suzuki and Tyler Toffoli at eight oh one. At nineteen oh at nineteen oh nine, our Terry Lekkinen scores his second of the playoffs, assisted by Brett Kulak and Brendan Gallagher. Into the second, a gorgeous wrist shot by Logan Stanley for his um, first career playoff goal. Assisted by Jordy Ben and Kyle Connor. KFC! Logan Stanley scores a second of the game with a gorgeous wrister, no, one timer again, past Carey Price. Assist, assisted by KFC again and Mason Appleton at 529. No goals in the third. We go to overtime. And a minute thir 39 into overtime, Tyler Toffoli scores his fourth of the playoffs, assisted by Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki. And that ends the season for the Jets. So, yeah. That was a heartbreaker, but it was expected, though. It was predictable, to be honest. But, yeah. And I'm just going to share my thoughts for the Jets, what they should do, what I liked, what I didn't like. Okay, let's go back to the Lonnie Dubois trade. Um, I still like Pierre-Luc Dubois. Um, hate me all you want. I don't give a shit. You know what? We never know. Could he be battling with injury? Does he still have an injury, but he's not telling anyone? I don't know. And he better... I just hope he's not one of these players that's you know too cool for Winnipeg. Because I thought well, his parents live here, so he might like it, but... I don't know. Look, what's going on behind the scenes? You better not be a locker room cancer, we heard. But yeah. Um. What was I gonna say? And it would be um for Jets fans, it would be a kick in the face if um do um sh uh, Lonnie becomes like the next Timu Solani for um Columbus and Dubois has been a flop, continues to be a flop. You know that'd be a spin in the face to us. <laughs> like why couldn't he do like why? You know, um, but yeah, um, and at the trade deadline, we acquired, uh, Jordy Ben from the Vancouver Canucks in exchange, extend, ugh, exchange for a, ugh, so you know what I mean, for a six-round pick. I was like, okay, that was kind of underwhelming, but okay. You know, because I really wanted, like, Jamie Oleksiak, Josh Manson, or, you know, David Savard, but yeah. You know, I was disappointed, but I don't hate Jordy Ben, but I'd rather have, like, Oleksiak or whatever, you know. Like, I don't know. I thought this, like, rest, like, week for a week and a half would refuel for the Jets, you know? But, no, they just look lazy. This is what I hate about this series. Um, Half of the time, it's like the Jets just didn't even try. It's like they just wanted to lose, and I don't know. Just lack of heart. Um, Leaving Hellebuck hot out to dry. I'm sorry, but that has to stop, man. I hate that shit. Like, I want Hellebuck to continue to be a good goalie. You know, maybe nominate for the Vezna again, but... Uh, this is getting old, man. We're, I'm, even I see it. I hate when they leave Hellebuck hot out to dry because how bad the defense was. You know? But there's, like, at times the defense looked awesome. Like, it looked, like, great. But most times, it looks like a AHL-quality defense, you know? It's like, God... Just pisses me off. You know? And I can't wait for, like, 
We better protect Logan Stanley from Seattle. I don't care what anyone says. You know? And I'm excited to see Declan Chisholm and Dylan Sandberg fully developed. And Cole Perfetti. We better see Hinola and uh, Maurice. Paul Maurice, are you listening? Because we better see um, Dylan Sandberg, Vili Hinola, and Cole Perfetti if he's ready full time on the roster. I'll still give Cole Perfetti more time, but I heard Dylan Sandberg's ready to go in Hinola too. You know? You gotta stop, like, like, I love Paul Maurice, I do, but I can see why a lot of people hate him. They feel like they, he favoritisms the veterans a lot, you know? I get close to the playoff time, but come on, man. You gotta let the young guys do their thing, you know? But yeah. But sorry, I just had to let that out. But Chevy, you got some more to do this offseason, buddy. You, you really do. Um, and Pierre Luc Dubois, I'll give him a second chance. Yeah, I, I believe in second chances. You know me, but yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoy the video and go Jets go. Oh, and one more thing, I am cheering for the Canadians to win the cup now. Bring the cup back to Canada, Montreal. I, I'm get. Um, Carey Price, Shea Weber need a cup. Yeah. But yeah. So. Have a good rest of your night, everybody.